The part is in, and it's time to repair the K1. Yeah, remember in the earlier video, I accidentally blew the resistor on the original K1 board, so this is the replacement and how to do it. This is the PCBA board here. We're gonna have connectors in the front and back that we're gonna have to remove to get this off, as well as this cable tensioning bracket that's held on with this clip and these two screws right here. Let's start off by taking off the fan that's attached to the fan shroud first. Once you disconnect the fan, then you're able to remove the fan shroud out of your way. Next up, we're gonna remove the tensioning clip that holds in the communication cable to the print head. Almost forgot to tell you, you gotta remove the chain cable off the top of the print head held on with one screw. Watch out that you don't lose the springs that it's attached to. They have a tendency to pop out. Let's go ahead and remove the cable from the PCBA. With the cable removed, we can go ahead and remove the three screws that mount the PCBA to the print head. These screws are holding on the PCBA and the hot end cooling fan all together with just these three screws that we're removing now. While I have this all exposed, let's talk about the filament path on this machine. One of the main reasons why it's good at printing high temp. It is a direct drive extruder with an aluminum heat sink and an all metal heat brake and a ceramically heated nozzle. Okay, back to the PCBA. So with the PCBA disconnected, you can go ahead and remove the fan from the JST connector on the back of the PCBA board. Then we're going to go ahead and take off the other connectors back here. One's going to be your thermistor, the other one's going to be your heating element itself, and the other one with the multiple wires is going to be your filament runout sensor. With everything disconnected, you can then go ahead and remove the PCA board away from the print head and you can take a look and see whatever the damages were that you're replacing it for or take a good look and see what you did yourself. Creality did send us our replacement part complimentary. This is what it looks like in the bag. And we're gonna go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the new board versus the old board. They are identical, so it doesn't look like there's been any new updates recently. And here's an up-close look at the resistor that I blew from the original board. Let's go ahead and install the new PCBA board on the print head. Basically, we're gonna do everything in reverse, installing the parts back where they belong. The connector should fit in the exact same spots that you took them out from before. Remember not to force them in or you could bend the pins and then you're right back to square one. The thermistor and the heating element are both two different size connectors, so it shouldn't give you any trouble putting them back in. Don't forget to connect the filament runout sensor. It is going to be located on the back side of the print head. Now that we have all the main connectors attached, we can go ahead and concentrate on the fans. We're gonna install the cooling fan for the heat sink uh, right here. The fan does have an airflow direction that you do need to pay attention to. If you note here, the blades themselves that are exposed are facing out and the shielded part with the sticker is facing the actual heat sink side. What you want to do is line up the holes and make sure everything fits. As long as your holes are all aligned, you should be able to insert the screws in the three slots and it should line up. I like to normally use a technique where I put one screw in and just get it started. That way I can line up the rest of the alignment holes and then slide in my screws and tighten everything down. Just a reminder, make sure your printer is off at this point. This is why I'm replacing the PCBA in the first place. I shorted out a resistor because the printer was still on. 
Don't over tighten the screws, it just needs to be secured. When you install the tensioner again, remember these springs still like to pop out. Keep them in place when you're putting it back in or else they will come out. Go ahead and connect the communication wire first before you put on the tensioning bracket. There are grooves on the side of the connector in order to get it correctly positioned. With the communication wire installed, you can go ahead and line up your bracket. Make sure that the holes line up on the bottom, not on the spring. You'll notice why it's called a tensioner because it's springy. Go ahead and replace the two screws that you took out of the tensioner before. Just make sure that it has enough tension on it that it's holding the wire in place, not enough that it's strangling it or crimping the wire. You can adjust tension with the two screws that attach to the tensioning bracket. Again, just make sure you don't over tighten it and crimp your wire. Don't forget to reattach the drag chain on the top of the print head. It's going to be the what is this for screw. Go ahead and use that screw to mount the drag chain to the top of the print head. Take the fan shroud and attach the parts cooling fan to the PCBA board right here. And now everything's hooked back up. We can go ahead and power it on and hope for no smoke. That's a joke. Well, at least I hope it's a joke. Oh look, we got power. See the blue light? Blue light indicates we got a good signal from the communication cable straight to the PCBA. Now, let's get to what started this whole fiasco. The fan. It's a custom remix head, there is no STL. Let's go ahead and give it some juice and see if she powers on, shall we? There it is. Powered right on, no issue with it. And ooh, that's blowing nice cold air coming out of there. So we got some great parts cooling going on. Let's turn it off and see if it powers down. Yep, no issue there. Let's turn it back on, make sure. Yeah, I think we're back in business. Let's remount it. Go ahead and remount it up on top of the print head and put your screws in on the right and left side. Uh, I do have some custom screws here, but if you want, you have yours. Screw them in on the left and the right. Make them nice and tight to keep it in place. Get your wire out the way. Sometimes that hot cooling fan wire will get in the way. Just tuck it behind the shroud and then go ahead and screw in your left and right sides. And with that buttoned up, we're all done. So it's finished, completed. It was simple. And we're gonna go ahead and run a print on here. There we go, we got the first layer going down just fine, no issues. Really happy about that and even happier that the fan is pumping away as you can hear. Take a listen. Yeah, there it is, all done.